Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, pleasure to welcome you to the Carnegie Endowment, and a particular pleasure to, uh, to welcome back to the endowment Dr. Abdullah. Uh, we're hearing more and more that 2008 is going to be the year of Afghanistan, or should be uh, the year of Afghanistan. Um, we will see whether that <coughs> comes, to, comes to pass. But without any question, there is an urgent need for greater attention, <coughs> excuse me, and for greater effort, international effort. Uh, the problems are growing, uh, as is the likelihood that the country could slip back into the grip of, of unrestrained violence. A few months from now, early April, NATO will convene its summit in Bucharest, and Afghanistan will be uh, uh, top among the issues that will be discussed. Um, and so leading up to that time, uh, we here at Carnegie have decided to organize a series of events to focus on the leading challenges that the country uh, faces this year and that both uh, the Afghani government and the international community um, have to jointly confront. Um, among these are first, of course, the sufficiency of uh, and the leadership of the military effort, um, the question of whether additional troops are needed, how many, uh, whether the leadership of the existing forces is uh, appropriately directed for counterinsurgency efforts. Um, second, of course, the counter-narcotics effort, um, where the record uh, over the past seven years has been dismal, um, and, and the reconstruction uh, process and how that's going. And central to all of these, of course, the question of the performance of the Afghan government um, its ability to deliver basic services and to manage corruption. Um, to lead off this series, we really couldn't have a better um, uh, person with us to address at least some of these issues, maybe all, and what's on your minds, um, than Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, <coughs> who is currently Secretary General of the Massoud Foundation. Um, as I think everybody here knows, um, he was also um, uh, Secretary, uh, Foreign Secretary uh, of the country from 2002 to 2006. Um, he, before that, held many posts in the transitional government, uh, spokesman uh, f for the government. Um, he is trained originally as a physician, an ophthalmologist, uh, and uh, um, in his period of, um, in, in Peshawar, led uh, efforts to take care of Afghan refugees there in the mid-80s um, before joining um, uh, Commander Massoud's effort um, in the mid to, for, well, better part of a decade. So his, uh, the trajectory of his life has really mirrored that of, uh, of his country. Um, he's been at the center of, uh, of events now for 25 years and uh, we are looking forward to hearing from him uh, an insider's view of what, uh, where we are, what must be done, um, and uh, the, the alternative roles of, uh, of cha priorities for, for the international community, Afghan government. So thank you so much. We're looking forward to, to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank Carnegie Endowment for International Peace uh, for providing me this opportunity to talk about the issue of Afghanistan, the situation in Afghanistan. In a very short notice, uh, I informed him of my willingness uh, to come and to speak here, and it was confirmed soon after. Uh, it is like uh, after two years uh, since I haven't been in Washington, so my first trip after two years. Uh, in Washington, things have not changed that much, <laughs> but a lot has changed <laughs> uh, in Afghanistan in, the, in, this, in this course. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit. Uh, uh, back to, to uh, 
in a start with 2001 uh, before getting to the present situation and then uh, uh, talk about the future prospects. Before 2001, there was little hope uh, that Afghanistan uh, would be restored uh, as a country, as a state, in its nation, as a, as a, as a nation, uh, will be given the chance to live at peace within itself and with the others. Uh, Al-Qaeda had taken root there, and it was like its global capital. Then came an opportunity in the midst of a tragedy here in Washington and New York. Uh, as a result of that, the people of Afghanistan got together and the international community joined hand. Uh, and then the process started. Uh, the main the main element in the process was uh, the option or the choice of the Afghan people for going for general elections, one person, one vote. Uh, I hear, uh, I was in Germany, and one of the questions was that, wasn't it uh, early for Afghanistan or too early, or is it, does it work at all for Afghanistan to, to opt for general elections? My point has been, and this is my firm belief, knowing the context of the situation fully at that time in Afghanistan in, in the conditions of our country, uh, in the uh, 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 views of our people, uh, that was the only, that would have been the only way to get out of that uh, uh, quagmire which, it, which prevailed in Afghanistan for 25 years. We had exercised and experienced every other option in the course of the past 25 years, and had not worked, in, 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 in had worked uh, uh, against the interest of our people in, 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 in and led to the situation which was there. So it wasn't like an idea being suggested and imposed on Afghanistan, the idea of going for elections uh, as the way of uh, uh, participation uh, in the destiny of a country and a nation. I think your help the help of the international community made it possible uh, uh, to materialize that dream. Uh, apart from that, uh, one or two other, thing happen, other things happened uh, in, in the course of events. Uh, Taliban and Al-Qaeda were uprooted from Afghanistan. Uh, it took just a few weeks before they lost their bases <coughs> in, in that is a telling story of uh, uh, total loss of support among the population or absence of any support from the population because at that time uh, we were not talking about uh, uh, several thousands of uh, ISAF or, or NATO or, 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 or coalition forces. It, was, uh, it started with a few hundred of fewer troops there and the people on the ground that Taliban and Al-Qaeda lost their bases in Afghanistan. Uh, there was an assumption that it is a spent force, Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Uh, and uh, uh, the threat perception within Afghanistan uh, was from the, uh, from the actors within the country rather than uh, the, the Taliban which were, uh, uh, which were provided essentially outside Afghanistan and taking root back. So that, I think, uh, uh, affected the rest of our strategies. So. Uh, if the threat perception uh, 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 is from the internal forces, then your whole efforts will be focused how to how to how to manage it. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, outside Afghanistan, in the neighboring country Pakistan, there was an assumption that the presence of the uh, uh, U.S. as well as the uh, international uh, for a community in Afghanistan is a temporary one. Uh, and that broad concept of uh, uh, using extremism as an instrument of uh, for achieving foreign policy objectives had not changed in Pakistan. Uh, in, in Taliban, they were in, in our negotiations with, with, the, uh, uh, with them, they would say that uh, it's a domestic issue for Afghanistan. And no action was taken against uh, Taliban back there, or the leadership of Taliban, which were there and. Uh, not only that, but they, they, they enjoyed some support as well. 
So the threat developed within Pakistan. Once, once uh, Taliban lost their bases, they reestablished their bases in Pakistan. That was the critical moment. Uh, I'm talking in the course of 2001, 2002, 2003, in 2004. So that's the, that's the framework of time that I'm talking about. Uh, at the same time, the United States got engaged in Iraq. Uh, that in itself was, was a major uh, factor. And uh, Pakistan, of course, was cooperating from ha uh, time to time by handing over a few members of uh, Al-Qaeda. Uh, and uh, that was also uh, something which was appreciated a great deal. As a result, the uh, um, uh, uh, Taliban got stronger in Pakistan and they start started uh, uh, attacks on, 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 on Afghanistan. Within the country, that consensus which existed at the beginning uh, uh, was damaged in the course of events which, uh, which, uh, which was followed. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, from a situation which uh, President Karzai was uh, supported uh, uh, by majority, an absolute majority of the people, and, and later on elected by, uh, by an absolute majority vote, uh, to a situation as of now, uh, where uh, this political uh, uh, atmosphere is, uh, is one of uh, absolute mistrust between the players. Uh, yeah. When I say the players, uh, I mean in this broad vision of uh, 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 a moderate uh, Islamic country, a uh, democratic country, a peaceful country uh, which uh, respects the rights of its citizens and live at peace with one another, that all the political forces within Afghanistan are, uh, uh, are sharing this, this common vision. Uh, but when you see the action uh, on the ground or the way that the state institutions are fa functioning, then you didn't get that, uh, uh, that promise anymore. So that consensus within the country was also damaged. Then we had uh, uh, more or less a consensus in the region. I mentioned about the uh, Pakistan factor. Uh, recently, we, heard, uh, we are hearing about uh, 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 things which are happening from Iran as well. So it means that Iran, which has started playing a constructive role, at least to the extent that these reports are out, uh, the situation is not as such. Uh, and among the international community, in broad sense, there is, an, uh, there is a willingness to continue support, but we hear from time to time, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, 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 different signals. So altogether, uh, we are not where we should have been uh, uh, after six years from, 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 from Bonn Agreement because of all these factors and all these uh, developments. The situation, uh, uh, today's situation, uh, is such that at least from what I, what I can see and I can uh, <coughs> witness, we need a review, a review of the situation uh, uh, in order to draw some lessons. Uh, and uh, when I say we as, I mean Af Afghans in the international community altogether. Um, there are one or two immediate uh, uh, lessons uh, um, uh, out of the, uh, what, 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 what we have witnessed. For example, uh, it, it is important, it is, uh, it, is, it is critical, it was important, it was critical that we, we hold general elections. But the assumption that you have the uh, popular mandate in, uh, because of the votes, uh, uh, yeah, that that suffice, uh, and and uh, uh, and uh, 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 you, you you don't have to consider all the other uh, 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 factors which are which are important in developments in a country like Afghanistan uh, was was not the right assumption. I mean, had that assumption been right, so we have we have a, an elected government. Uh, um, uh, which uh, millions of people voted for, for President Karzai. So what is it that we are saying that the gap between the people in the government is a growing gap? Uh, 
uh, what's the factor behind it? So this needs to be looked at thoroughly. We uh, opted for presidential system, uh, uh, and the, the power is uh, uh, concentrated in the center. Uh, is it, is it uh, functioning the way it was expected? It has to be looked at. Now, the fact that, uh, just by giving examples, I want to, uh, I won't go into details of this uh, and leave more time, uh, enough time for your uh, questions later on. Uh, the fact that we are deciding uh, uh, in Kabul about everything which is happening from the level of a district up to the, uh, up to the uh, uh, provinces and so on and so forth, in, in not allowing the provincial councils to play an effective role in the provinces, is it helpful? I don't think so. Uh, we have uh, examples of appointments of governors which were uh, uh, kicked out of one province by the people, appointed to the next. <coughs> Again, the same thing, appointed to the next. The third uh, uh, province, before him going there, the people said that we, we don't want him. Uh, he's being appointed to the fourth province. Uh, this, is, this is not working. Uh, we need to look at it. Uh, uh, and, and, and why it's important and critical. These sort of things might happen somewhere else as well in a stable situation, uh, uh, but that's different. Here we miss an opportunity, a great opportunity, of having the people with us, which are with us in, in, in its totality, but, but we don't help them to be more hopeful and to be a participants in, in, their, uh, uh, in their lives. So there will be a lot of examples as such. The fact that we moved from uh, the interim government, without any doubt, to ignore my participation in these governments uh, for a while, it was more effective. Uh, there were some shortcomings perhaps there. It was, uh, it was taken care of in the transitional government, but it was also uh, effective government. And then we have elected government, and the people expected that uh, this, this to be even more effective. Do we have it? No. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's very evident. And, and uh, uh, I don't want to uh, get into details of this. This will be talking about my own colleagues. Mm, but that's, that's a point. Uh, the existing, uh, the, the present relations between the parliament and the government uh, is not acceptable. And it's, it, of course, it's, it's not to putting the blame on one person, uh, uh, which, is, which is the president. Uh, of course, he's, he, uh, the people have voted for the president, and even those who have not voted for the president, they have uh, equal rights to expect him to do things about it. But it's for the political leadership as a whole. Uh, and, and there has to be an end to this political stalemate. Uh, and the, the, the political leaders should get together uh, to work it out. Uh, and uh, 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 it's like a rope which, which everybody is pulling towards itself. And how long do we do this? Or we, we are doing this? And uh, uh, it's a responsibility not before this generation, but for the, for the future generations as well. And uh, we like it or not. Uh, our role was like the founding fathers of a nation because a new Afghanistan was born. And whatever we do, it will be taken as an example for the future as well. If we don't leave lessons uh, that the people could look at it and be proud of it in the future, uh, we miss another opportunity. Uh, so uh, these are these uh, 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 some of the points which I wanted to emphasize. By emphasizing on these points, I'm not saying that uh, uh, I'm not ignoring or underestimating all those positive developments which has taken place in the lives of uh, the people of Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, while uh, uh, for, for, for millions of uh, our people there was no hope, no prospect, they started their new life, refugees started returning back, the, we had our constitution. In, a lot has happened that it will be more than what, what I can 
speak about it today. But it's critical in order to consolidate those achievements uh, to, to, uh, 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 to start a process which is more promising, uh, which, which takes into account uh, these uh, 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 grievances of the people, expectations of the people, uh, in, in, in work as a, uh, 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 as, a, as, a, as a guideline for the people so the people see their, their future in it. It's critical in, in the time is now. Uh, in, uh, for my trip to Washington at this stage, it's mainly public events like this which I will be addressing. Uh, uh, my aim at this time was that I know uh, that uh, in some times to come there will be a new administration. Uh, and uh, in all, uh, I was told uh, by our American friends time and again that in the first one or two years it will be mainly, the focus will be mainly uh, domestic issues. Uh, I want to emphasize at this stage that we don't have more time to lose, to miss. So uh, uh, together we have done a lot. And we should have done much more. Uh, 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 but still there is opportunity. Don't let this opportunity to slip out of our hand. For us, it will be gone forever. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, it will be no exaggeration if I emphasize on the repercussions for the rest of the world. Uh, uh, so uh, on that note, uh, I, I uh, stop and, and, and uh, wait for your questions. And Okay, we have uh, uh, some microphones, so please wait till you get till you get them, and uh, we'll start right here. Right behind you is coming a mic, and I think it'd be nice if people would identify themselves. Uh, my name is Patrick Fine. I'm with the Academy for Educational Development. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, I want to first say that um, I have profound respect for the work that you did as foreign minister. I know I speak for a lot of people to say that it was a great disappointment when you left the government. Uh, my question is, I'd like your perspective on, you, you spoke about the importance of governance and particularly of local governance at the provincial and district level. My question is, in your view, why is it so difficult to find governors who are effective, who are not corrupt, and who have the support of the people. Yeah, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, it, it shouldn't be uh, uh, that difficult. Uh, in, uh, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, and we, if we get the people involved in it, they will, they will, they will let us know. Uh, and there is one critical point in that. If the, if the uh, criteria is personal loyalty, uh, rather than uh, loyalty to the nation and to the, to the constitution and so on and so forth. In personal loyalty, I mean very strict and narrow one. Then we miss the, uh, the sight of the, uh, the whole situation. And then we are stuck with, with a few people around. So uh, it's, it's the issue of an attitude rather than the conditions and circumstances. The issue of capacity is always a problem. In, in, in. Then uh, sometimes we... Uh, uh, the, the, the decisions which were made in the, in the past few years uh, was like, uh, okay, uh, there is the, the, these criteria. Uh, we have uh, a sort of semi-literate or illiterate governor, uh, which is uh, delivering to some extent in this and this and these areas, uh, but he's, he's not educated. And that uh, person was replaced by, uh, by uh, uh, educated person edu got its education in Germany. This is an, this is an example, uh, a master degree or something, uh, but uh, had not lived in Afghanistan for 20 years. Uh, he was sent to, to a province in Afghanistan to, to do the job. That will not going to work. The people in the first uh, uh, instant would tell you and have told us that it will not going to work. So it's, it's that judgment that we do, but at the same time looking at it with a with a, with a broad scope, that uh, that there are a lot of people uh, which are loyal to, to to their nation, to their country, to the law of the country, 
but at the same time they are not of type of the people which will which will express their personal personal loyalty to somebody uh, either a minister or higher in the ranks uh, in the way that you would expect them uh, and then uh, you, you are stuck if you, if you don't change the attitude I'm Mark Schneider International Crisis Group um, I share the gentleman's view uh, Dr. Abdullah that uh, uh, your role in government was extremely important during those first several years. Um, I don't think you have to be worried about the next administration uh, being totally focused on domestic issues. I have no doubt that Afghanistan will be a major uh, uh, priority for uh, whatever administration takes office. Um, in that regard, however, you, you didn't talk a lot about the degree of security uh, currently in the country. Um, last week we saw the bombing at the Serena Hotel uh, I was there a month ago, and um, I think that the, the concern about security, uh, not just in, in Kabul, but uh, around the country, was extremely high. Um, since you mentioned the, um, sure. the, the rise in capacity of the Taliban, uh, the United Nations now has almost um, written off the south and the east of the country in terms of the ability to carry out reconstruction activities on a, re on a, on a sustained basis because of the level of insecurity. They're ne it's now entirely sort of painted in extreme risk right now. Sure. Um, and I'm interested because there are two elements there. One is the capacity of the Taliban to come across the border, which yeah. relates to the Pakistan. Sure. And the other is uh, really the, the capacity, and this goes to uh, Dr. Tuckman's comment, Dr. Matthews' comment about the, um, uh, the structure of the international military force uh, in Afghanistan. I think th there's a question whether there needs to be a restructuring of the, the division between the U.S. and NATO in terms of the, the command structure and also on the civilian side. We, we have a competing, if you will, um, focus of power between NATO, the EU, uh, the UN, and the major uh, bilateral um, supporters, including the United States. I mean, those seems to me those issues relate to the ability to change the, uh, the nature of security to permit the kind of reconstruction and governance that uh, is necessary. That's right. Uh, security, especially in the past one or two years, uh, uh, it has not improved at all, but rather it, uh, we, have, we, have, we have seen a, a negative uh, trend. Uh, in between, there are some something which is uh, which might help security in, in midterm or long term. For example, those uh, core uh, leaders of Taliban, which were leading the fight within the within the country within Afghanistan, were targeted and, and, uh, and they are not there anymore. So this should be considered as a uh, as a po as a positive thing. In, in long term, it will have its impact. Uh, but there are one or two other things which has happened in the country, which is, uh, uh, which is also in the same way it affects the long-term uh, prospect of security in negative manner. That was a positive side of it. For example, uh, it was uh, 12 months ago that there was a deal in Musa Qala. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, there was an agreement with the local leaders. Uh, the, 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 the surface of it was such that it is an agreement with the local leaders, but as a result of that, Taliban took root in Musaqala. And for the first time after 2001, Musaqala had turned into a training camp for, for Chechnyans, for Uzbeks, for uh, Arabs, for Pakistanis, for everybody else, like the uh, old days. So Taliban took advantage of that situation. Yeah, and, and then a few weeks ago, uh, uh, Musaqala was liberated. But there were like a thousand or two 2,000 Taliban already there, and then we had some casualties of Taliban. They left that area. They have gained strength, and they have gone to some other places, and they will hit us back. Some of these flaws in the strategy uh, will, will have a lasting impact on security in Afghanistan. What was the message from Musa Khala uh, 12, 12 months ago? That we have, to, uh, uh, we have to make a deal with Taliban. Or it's not for us, it's not for Afghans. Even if we don't do it, somebody else will do it. So that has changed the perception of the people and has affected the psyche of the people. So while in, in, statistics, in, the, uh, in the statistics, we might have a few statistics which will make us more hopeful, but the fact the overall impact has created such a perception 
is not is not helpful at all and uh, 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 I, I don't want to uh, put myself for a second in a district uh, which is liberated in, 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 in it's okay the government is there now, in the neighborhood is district is with the Taliban at any time this district could be uh, overrun uh, so this this is this is uh, another aspect of security but when it comes to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, military strategies uh, we are all aware of the constraints among the NATO allies back home their public opinion and so on and so forth the right strategy will be to make use of that what what we have what we can change for good of course why not what we have and in, in, in use it in a, in a better way so this area of stability should extend should stability and security should be consolidated in the areas that we consider it stable in this area should be extended at the same time a focus a more focused effort on those areas which are considered unstable different methods and different ways will work and, and, and there isn't a universal uh, method to to apply to that <coughs> Thank you. My name is Almut Wieland Karimi. I work for the German Fred Hebert Foundation. And uh, I would like to follow up on Mark Schneider's question. Uh, which foundation? The Friedrich Ebert Foundation. Okay, yes. Actually, we met yes. in Kabul, sure. so you sure, might sure. recall. Sure. <coughs> so um, it was, I wanted to follow up on Mark Schneider's uh, f uh, question on the security situation. And you have explained the situation, especially in the south and in the east. And you have mentioned the Taliban. But I, I've been wondering whether there are other forces in opposing the peace process inside Afghanistan. You have also mentioned uh, the role of the neighboring countries. And I was wondering whether you, could, have, uh, whether you could give us an assessment of other groups like uh, criminal gangs, like maybe former Mujahideen groups, who are also not happy with this peace uh, agreement and trying to find new opportunities. Since you have a lot of insight, maybe you could, you could explain to us that it's not only uh, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and who else we should support sure. the Afghan governments in, in opposing or integrating into the peace process. Sure. The, um, uh, the fact that the composition of Taliban is not just the Taliban as such, it's also criminal gangs. It's also drug mafia. Uh, it's also perhaps some people with the grievances. There is no doubt about it. That's, uh, that's the overall composition. Um, in regards to, uh, uh, um, when I mentioned about the lessons of the past, uh, one, one uh, lesson would be from this DDR process. We have demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration. Uh, I, I failed to find anybody to explain to me what is that R reintegration means in, in real terms. For thousands or perhaps for tens of thousands of people who were in the uh, jihad against the Soviets or in the resistance against the uh, <coughs> Taliban. What does that R mean? Uh, uh, apparently it meant $100 towards the end of their, once, once they accepted that they will give up their arms as a, as a sort of lifetime reward for people uh, who have been, uh, who had no choice. But to, uh, but to stay in those circumstances, no other opportunities, uh, but to stay in those circumstances. So this is, this is a real factor for insecurity. So those thousands of people which know how to fight, uh, and, and, and if it ends up in a situation that there is no destiny, no prospect for them, some might have been, and, and some have been, of course, reintegrated in the National Army, but in a broad sense, uh, you know, this, is, this is very insignificant uh, part of it. They will be recruits for, for <coughs> criminal gangs for, for the, uh, for the uh, 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 Taliban and, and so on and so forth. But as a whole, apart from Hikmatyar's people as former Mujahideen uh, parties, uh, you don't see a group of people which are, which are, which are uh, supportive of the Taliban and in, 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 in uh, uh, are involved in violence uh, against the people or creating more uh, insecurity in the country. So uh, there are those resentments among individuals and so on and so forth, but as a whole, uh, uh, there are a lot of opposition to the government, one way or another, but at the same time, people are not involved in, in, in violence against 
the, the citizens of Afghanistan. Uh, David Isby. Dr. Abdullah, sir, uh, the transborder nature of much of the insecurity coming from Pakistan has been uh, often commented on and due to the current uh, crisis in the Pakistani uh, governance. Uh, throughout your career, you have had to negotiate with the Pakistani government uh, in good times and bad. And I'm wondering if you can give any specific directions as to how uh, the United States might act to get better results from Islamabad uh, to help the situation in Afghanistan? The, uh, uh, the, it's, it's important in the uh, – I might not be in a position to suggest something for the U.S. Uh, side, but, but my experience would be that uh, while uh, the focus uh, is sometimes on the immediate result and immediate outcome, uh, one should be able to put it into, into perspective for the long-term result. That being said, uh, but you could be dragged uh, in a sort of long-term strategies which is time-consuming and sounds very logical. You should be aware of that factor as well at the same time. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, you need immediate results. You also uh, want to see how it happens uh, in the course of time. But sometimes a sort of prolonged strategies which have the best logic uh, inherent at it will be presented to you, uh, uh, but then uh, the, 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 the underlying factors will develop uh, quite against that. Uh, always uh, be aware of that sort of logic uh, uh, when, it, when it's dealing with in this sort of complex uh, situation. Now, uh, in fact, it was, it was in uh, uh, Carnegie Endowment, uh, perhaps in late 2002 in, or early, to, early 2003, that I said that there are terrorist training camps inside Pakistan. Oh, my God. I, I took everything. They, they attacked me personally, and they said that I was working for President Karzai in his, in his restaurant somewhere. Everything that <laughs> – because of that, and it was denied. And it was in late 2003 or 2004 when they announced that now they are attacking those training camps. So that has been part of my experience. But at the same time, uh, uh, I am involved in a peace, Jirga Peace Assembly, which was a good initiative between Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, and uh, uh, a good dialogue venue between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Unfortunately, today, because of the developments in Pakistan since the announcement of emergency, we haven't been able to follow it. But this is, uh, for us, it is, it is a way of, another way of dealing with it. Uh, but always beware of those <coughs> different methods. Yeah, Kumar from Amnesty International. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, welcome in a different role, and I'm sure you'll be more forthcoming because no government restrictions are with you at this time. I have, uh, I, I was a little late, so pardon if I repeat any of these questions. My first one is, is there any increase in ethnic tensions within Afghanistan between Tajik, Uzbeks, uh, Hazaras, and Pashtuns? Second is, um, there are a lot of so-called moderate Taliban who are part of the government now, this uh, Karzai's government. Uh, how is it affecting? Karzai's, uh, President Karzai's role in dealing with Taliban. Third is uh, Iran and India. Are they involved in any covert or overt actions uh, inside uh, Afghanistan? Thank you. Did you say that you had one question? Or? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there, there has been some, some uh, uh, ethnic uh, polarization, I should say. Uh, in the course of uh, the past few years. That, that's to, to say the least. Uh, and when I mentioned that uh, the consensus which existed in the process has started with, that consensus is not there anymore. Uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, the, uh, the, uh, while the people have legitimate uh, uh, grievances, they will not take it at any stage, and they have not taken it at any stage beyond that legitimate uh, uh, framework. Of, of a debate or, 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 or uh, uh, freedom of expression or uh, 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 political movement. Uh, 
but then sometimes political elite uh, take it far beyond uh, wherever uh, it, 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 uh, they can take it, uh, which is dangerous, which is, uh, which is uh, com confusing the people. Uh, and uh, that's uh, in that uh, uh, front. About moderate Taliban, and, uh, uh, it, is, it is something that, uh, uh, that I, I, I need to educate myself further. Uh, about in, uh, 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 and uh, when when uh, when the process started, uh, the bond process, there was one idea that uh, no use for a conference or, or, or for for taking Taliban out. Let's wait to bring moderate Taliban uh, uh, into uh, into the stage, and then we're going to take <coughs> care of the situation. Uh, when there was this uh, Buddha, the issue of Buddha, uh, the, everybody was hoping that. We are talking to the moderate Taliban. One or two are, 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 are living in Kabul today of those moderates which were being talked about. At the same time, the, the, the explosives were prepared and everything was done. And once it was tried and it didn't work, and then it was demolished. But the talks with the moderate Taliban continued up to that moment. So that's, that's a, a critical point. Um, there is no moderation in their agenda. If you're talking about the agenda of Taliban, there is no moderation. It is the re-establishment of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, which means the, the, the Emirate under Mullah Omar. There you don't find a moderation. If you're talking about the people, which under circumstances, they happen to be in that side or this side. Uh, we, we, are, we had it in the old days, the communists and non-communists and so on and so forth. That applies to the, to the Taliban movement as well. There will be a lot of people which, uh, which uh, as a result of the circumstances, stayed there. But they are today, uh, perhaps after uh, uh, an opportunity, uh, 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 which we should, uh, we should look into that, or we should act more proactively to provide those opportunities for these sort of people to, to come and join the peace process. Uh, with it, with it, but our hands should be very clear. Uh, the constitution of Afghanistan should, should be accepted by them, giving up violence uh, and not resorting to violence, uh, terrorism, the rights of the people, and so on and so forth. The, the, in, in that sense, the government of Afghanistan should, be, uh, should, should put more efforts. But there is no moderation in their agenda, uh, in, uh, uh, at least I, I, I don't know uh, about it. Uh, Iran started uh, uh, playing a constructive role from the, uh, from the uh, Bonn Agreement uh, and, and continued as such. But recently we hear uh, uh, reports uh, that uh, uh, it is arming uh, some Taliban groups. Uh, some arms have been found according to the claims which have been made. Uh, uh, that's one. In, apart from that, there is a lot of pressure on Afghan refugees in Iran. Uh, we know that it is uh, an issue that Afghanistan should be able to, to deal with it. In, in, it, it it's, uh, it's the issue of the Afghan citizens, and we should uh, 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 enable the environment for the return of uh, the, the, the refugees uh, sooner rather than later. But at the same time, it's a big humanitarian issue, uh, and there has been a lot of pressure from time to time, which has led to the constraints about the uh, relations between Afghanistan and, and Iran. At the same time, there, was, there, are, there are one or two other things which are not that necessary. We can, we can, we can, we can deal with it uh, uh, in a better way. For example, when this National Front was formed, uh, everybody said in the government that it's a formation of Iran, uh, which uh, I, I don't think that uh, uh, that's the case. Uh, but just to, uh, to, 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 to play with the internal uh, issues as such that uh, uh, that uh, it gives a different perception uh, to the to the neighboring country will not be uh, will not be helpful. Uh, India has been a partner in construction of Afghanistan, reconstruction of Afghanistan, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, I think the, their overall assistance is, is something like seven hundred million dollars for the construction of Afghanistan. Uh, uh, there has been always this issue uh, uh, which uh, we, we had to deal with it. Uh, uh, in Pakistan, they consider India's role in a different way, and always they put it in the context of their own relations. Uh, we have tried to, uh, to, to build linkages and, 
uh, bridges uh, with all countries, including uh, these two countries in the neighborhood of Afghanistan, uh, and, and assure them that uh, your, our relations with one country will not be detrimental to our relations to another. But sometimes it is very difficult to, uh, uh, to be able to convince countries. But in overall sense, Pakistan has been helping in reconstruction of Afghanistan. In our relations with Pakistan, in other areas like trade, commerce, cultural relations, peoples to peoples relations, there's been a lot of positive development. Uh, uh, but it's, it's been the issue of Taliban, which today has turned into a big, big, much bigger challenge for Pakistan itself, which has prevented us from, uh, from putting this issue behind us earlier. We have two questions or up front, and then I'd like to take a few in the back. My name is Nazira Kerimi, correspondent for Ariana Television from Afghanistan. I have two questions, Dr. Sagwan Dari, one English. Is it possible to give me? Uh, if, if you allow me to answer one question in Dari. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Well, position is more What would be your position for next administration in Afghanistan? And the next question, uh, in view of all this problem in Afghanistan, what do you think about future in Afghanistan? فیلی چه خانم رو خوش داره و داری بعدی با چه خانم خوش خواهد داشت. او خوب بود یک کمی دورتر است. مگر اگر یک نقش سازنده را در هر بخشی که بتوانیم ایفا کنیم طبعا از او دریغ نمی کنیم. این امی مثالش بر شما پیشتر گفتم که قصه افغانستان قصه مربوط به یک شخص یا یک فرد یا یک گروه نیست مربوط به همه مردم افغانستان است. و دلیلی که می جهستم کنم چیز دیگه نیست جزی که بازم یک جلب توجه رو به قصه افغانستان بکنیم نه به قصه ای که جنبه گروهی یا شخصی یا فردی داشته باشن about the question was about my role in the future administration uh, my answer was that I don't know how much I would be liked by the next administration so I don't know if I can play a role but as far as Afghanistan is concerned uh, I mean, Afghanistan's new administration. <laughs> uh, then uh, uh, I will uh, 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 I will not hesitate from playing, uh, from helping the people one way or another. That's uh, that's as far as I can say at this stage. Come right here. Can come over or come up here. Right behind you. Thank you. It's it's already late, and you have touched upon some of the issues I uh, thought of uh, asking and uh, wishing you to comment on. Uh, I'm the uh, former head of the Embassy of Denmark in Afghanistan, and thanks for all the good cooperation we've had over the years. Now I'm with the World Bank here in town. Um, one issue was more internal, the other regional. Uh, internally, uh, I guess that for, for some, us, some of us it has been a, a bit frustrating to see that, uh, that apparently it has been uh, difficult for Afghan political forces to kind of uh, get the national uh, following to a vision that would uh, take on the Taliban uh, ideology, uh, ideology head on, to, to push the ideology back and uh, not be afraid of being uh, shamed as uh, un-Islamic, uh, but defend uh, a, a position that uh, uh, kind of uh, pinpointed <coughs> the hideo hideous nature of, of the Taliban venture. That was the national one. The regional one you touched upon, but uh, could you elaborate on how uh, India may be uh, even more helpful than it is uh, today in order to on the political front, uh, do uh, maybe more uh, in order to, to seek uh, peaceful solutions in Afghanistan. Because as you say, Pakistan is the key, and Pac the lens of Pakistan, when it looks at Afghanistan, very much is through its relationship to India and its, its uh, fear of, of, of India. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. I, I think uh, uh, I agree with you that there is uh, uh, in the, uh, among the political forces in Afghanistan, in political elite in Afghanistan, uh, uh, there isn't 
the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 enough understanding uh, uh, on the basis of those common visions, which, which everybody shapes, uh, uh, in order not, to, not only to, to deal with the challenge of Taliban, but also to seize the opportunity to build a nation uh, and lay the foundation for, for a future uh, stable uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and I think that uh, the initiative should come from President Karzai himself. The others also have a responsibility, uh, everybody else, uh, and uh, um, uh, he should reach uh, 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 out to all, all forces, all leaders, and, and put behind, be able to uh, sort of digest some of the personal views and personal feelings towards some people. It's, uh, this is leadership. This is what is required. This is what is expected. And as I mentioned, it's not just for this generation, it's also for the future generation. Uh, and it's a pity that in a situation that majority of the people are supportive of a process uh, uh, and, and willing to contribute positively uh, towards it, uh, 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 the situation is uh, such a mass uh, that is not helping us uh, towards getting there. So it is everybody's responsibility. And, uh, 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 and once or twice, uh, President Karzai asked me if I could play a role, which uh, uh, wholeheartedly I offered my uh, my, my, my service in that regard. And, but then, of course, uh, there has to be uh, a, a process and, and some serious agendas in order to take this forward in, in, in a broad understanding, uh, which is possible. I, I don't, I'm not saying that it is impossible, but the initiative should come from the, uh, uh, from the president himself. And I think he, he takes one step, the others might take uh, two further steps in, towards that, uh, that, that goal. Um, I think in, 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 uh, uh, in regards to, 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 to India, which you mentioned, uh, I, I uh, elaborated a little bit about the, the amount of support that they are giving to Afghanistan so far in, in the role which they are uh, playing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, we are in, the, in an environment that we should, we should also uh, uh, take into account concerns which are which are there legitimate concerns the only thing which we uh, which we, we, which we didn't do in what shouldn't do uh, in the future uh, to give like the right of veto for one country over our relations with the others uh, that's not in the interest of afghanistan um, uh, that applies to 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 many situations uh, uh, but other than that wherever we can get cooperation and there is a willingness, which is there in, in India, and India considers stability in Afghanistan uh, in their uh, uh, prime interest. Uh, we should uh, take advantage of that. If we can do it further, why not? We're going to take a few in the back. A uh, gentleman right here in the middle. What's up? Al Milliken, the Washington Independent Writers. Uh, what kind of medical care are the citizens of Afghanistan receiving now and how does this compare with the time you were in the government and before? The, uh, um, uh, the overall statistics are such. Our, our Ministry of Health says that uh, the 85% uh, uh, of the population has access to primary health care. That's the uh, statistics. Uh, but like every other area of life, there, it, it is very difficult to to judge it that that's the that's really what, what does that mean then when you when you elaborate it it's it is it is uh, too little uh, uh, what what we have been able to do so uh, but i think in some in some areas there have been success for example in terms of prevention of diseases vaccination there have been national vaccination programs which has uh, helped the health situation uh, the um, uh, uh, maternal mortality rate has been brought down child mortality rate has been brought down, but still it's uh, among those worst, worst, like in the five, six worst cases around the world. Uh, so uh, there has, has been improvement uh, in, in, that, in that respect. Uh, uh, and uh, sometimes security situation affects the situation, but uh, apart from that, uh, uh, it, it, it is, uh, uh, there has been some improvement in the, in the uh, 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 cities, uh, in the uh, provinces in the rural areas, there are clinics, hospitals, 
the quality uh, is, of course, under question, the quality of healthcare. Uh, and that's, that's a big question mark. But still, uh, the situation has improved. Uh, uh, and uh, health and education uh, were considered as two priorities uh, in, in perhaps the most expenditure uh, uh, has been, uh, most, most resources has been allocated to that. But it is the issue of dealing with limited resources all the time and how to prioritize it. Uh, it has been in the, uh, uh, among the priority list. The situation has improved, but a lot more, of course, needs to be done. Yes. Ali Malgani from the African American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Abdullah, to Washington. Uh, while most of us have supported the uh, current process in Afghanistan, and tremendous progress has been made since 2001, as, as you have pointed, uh, and beside the external forces, negative forces in Afghanistan, the good governance and ability of this administration is in question in Afghanistan today. We all know <coughs> Uh, you have a foreign minister that has a vote of non-confidence from the parliament. The security is getting worse. You know, the interior minister or the ministry has been called corrupt by a UN finding. The economy looks good on paper, but there's lack of jobs, price hikes, corruption, and there's no moral leadership. What specifically needs to be done in order to correct that or to change that in order to, to bring Afghanistan back to the process that we all supported in the past? Uh, thank you. The, uh, uh, there is no doubt that the, the role of governance and good governance is essential. If you're talking about security or development or whatever, uh, that's essential part. Uh, and I, I mentioned briefly, I, I sort of touched it uh, briefly, uh, 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 and I didn't go into some details in, uh, in the situation deliberately. Uh, uh, you might understand my my, my, <laughs> uh, my position in, in that. Perhaps when next time uh, former Interior Minister, Minister Jalali speaks, he will be more open and candid <laughs> than me, but you know. And uh, the President talks about it. He talked like a few weeks ago about corruption and widespread and deep-rooted corruption in Stone Cabinet. Uh, then the people expect to, him to take action. Uh, and though it was uh, later on I, I, in another interview by the president, uh, I, I, I learned about different side of what he meant uh, uh, on his initial remarks. Uh, but still, if that's, the, uh, if that's the case, if the president of the country says that there is corruption in the government, it has to be taken care of. And that's the, what the people expect. And then uh, uh, the president talks about bringing changes in the cabinet, bringing changes mean positive changes in the, in the, uh, in the cabinet. The people expect him uh, to deliver. When these things are, are not happening, of course, uh, uh, the, the views of the people will be affected. And I think these are opportunities which are left for us. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, we, have to, we have to seize it. Between now and general elections, <coughs> It is a must that the people see a positive change. Uh, and not, not the sort of a stalemate between the parliament and the executive or with the involvement of judiciary and so on and so forth. That's, that's the, the critical point. But when it comes to general elections, upcoming general elections, uh, uh, it's important that the international community uh, 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 make sure that it is free and fair. I mean, I know the, the conditions and circumstances in our country. Uh, uh, and when we say free and fair elections, everything is relative, but it has to be seen the same way in the eyes of the people of Afghanistan. The impact will be much more than, 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 uh, than uh, in any other country, in any other country, because the, from what I started with, the, the, the conclusion of the people would be that it will not work. It doesn't work in this country. It's a, it's a good... Uh, instrument, but it doesn't work in this country. And then, then this will be, uh, 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 God forbidden, uh, the start of another round of instability. That's a must. Uh, it's, it's, it's the most critical point uh, 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 when it comes to the upcoming uh, general elections. But between now and then, if the local governance uh, is as such as it is, if the central government performs in the same way uh, uh, as it does, uh, uh, then uh, <laughs> you will only uh, uh, witness the growing of that gap between the people uh, uh, in the government, which is, uh, which in turn uh, 
uh, lead to further weaknesses and, and then as a result, a strengthening of the enemies of, uh, of the state. We should accept that Taliban are the enemy of a state. They don't believe in a statehood, uh, in nationhood. Uh, their, their agenda is far beyond that. When they see these things, uh, they, will, they, will, uh, they will use it in their advantage. And look at their, uh, the clarity of their strategy. And look at the confusion of what we, we do in the messages that we give. Uh, Serena Hotel, which uh, uh, Mr. Schneider, you, you mentioned earlier, it was like the symbol of security in Kabul. Everybody believed that uh, this is a place that you could go uh, and, and, and you feel secure, uh, go to gym or have a cup of tea or, 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 or have lunch or dinner or stay there when foreigners who are visiting Afghanistan. They hit it very badly. This is the report that I, I am giving it. I was, I, was in, I was in Germany when this, when this happened, and uh, I contacted uh, our friends back home. I learned that's, that's from a far away, uh, in, so uh, th it, there could be. Uh, s uh, the, the real situation might be something else. That it was two months ago that there were reports about it, that this is a target. And this, uh, the Ministry of Interior of Afghanistan had received that report. And for two days, three days, there were a few policemen around. No Afghan police providing security and, and, or supporting security. It was only the local uh, uh, secu the security for the hotel uh, uh, which, which was in place. So they know what they want to do. Uh, and uh, we are not effective in us, enough to prevent them from, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, getting, getting where they uh, want to. Thank you. from Carnegie. Dr. Abdullah, a uh, short question calling for a long answer. Since this event is taking place in the run-up to Bucharest, uh, I'd like you to elaborate a bit on what you said earlier regarding the need to develop differentiated strategies in the stable areas and unstable areas. Could you be more specific about it and tell us exactly what that means, both in terms of user resources, use also of uh, uh, soldiers on the, on the ground and so on? Uh, the, um, uh, you know this relation between the NATO allies is a very sensitive issue in the past one or two days, I think. <laughs> we, are, we are all educated about it. Uh, I mean, for us as Afghans, every contribution is important. Uh, the, there are countries which, which are doing in size or in number. It, does, it looks like not that significant, but it's important that too many countries are in this, uh, are, are in this process supporting Afghanistan. This is one. Uh, knowing about, about the uh, internal dynamics a little bit about some European cap capitals in the public opinion have a touch of it, uh, it will be extremely difficult uh, to, to push some countries beyond these national caveats which they have been uh, given a mandate by their parliaments or, 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 or their administrations. It will be extremely difficult to, uh, to, to push them to ignore these caveats and, and to, to take a further role. But of course, if, if on top of what they have been doing today in Afghanistan something else could be done, why not? Now, having taken into account these two factors, now, I think in the areas which countries are willing to do, uh, if, if it is work with them to, 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 to get some more work done in those areas, because the needs are there, in the stable areas, in secure areas, wherever. So if, the, if there are countries which are willing to do things in some parts of the country, but have constraints in, in moving beyond that, get them to do it more in those areas. So they, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, the stability in security is consolidated further in those areas and extended from those areas to the areas which, uh, which we, we, we consider it not secure and uh, uh, stable. But at the same time, uh, there are one or two things which would be like the red line for the, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, international side. That's like talking to the Taliban. If it is talk, if it is negotiation, if it is a dialogue, whatever it is, 
It's not the work of the foreign countries in Afghanistan. It's not the work of a PRT or, 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 a, or a military force or a military setup or, 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 or an intelligence of the, uh, another country. Of course, they can help uh, Afghanistan and enable Afghanistan further and support Afghan institutions to do it uh, uh, based on a strategy which, which, which is sound and acceptable for everybody. Uh, but at the same time, uh, some of these things has to be uh, uh, taken care of. Then it's, it's important not to give different messages. Uh, somebody says that we should be there in Afghanistan for 50 years, and then the people hear that there is a debate that it's the next autumn or, or the other autumn that it will be decided by another country either to leave or stay in Afghanistan. Uh, the people will be confused. And, and also, uh, it, it's a time, uh, it, it, I think it will be opportune time for, for NATO to deal with some aspects of the perception of the people of Afghanistan as of today. The perception will, there will be two perceptions, uh, or too many, but two extremes. One, uh, uh, NATO, the United States is there uh, in order to, uh, uh, to, to establish a permanent base for the sake of establishing a permanent base in Afghanistan. That's one. Uh, the next one would be that um, uh, um, uh, uh, you wake up tomorrow and everybody will be gone. Okay? So it's, it's, it's a wide range perception. But in, in between, there is a widespread perception that also it sounds very strange. There is a widespread perception that uh, perhaps the international community is not here to prevent us from Taliban return back. But somewhat Taliban were kicked out of the uh, uh, door and, and, and then they will be brought back uh, through the window. Uh, that's a perception. And I know it's so cynical to, to think that way, but it is a real perception among the people. And it has to be dealt with through giving messages uh, and, and, and through the actions and, and, and programs. Um, Gorman from the Belgian Embassy. <coughs> Actually, two questions. One is on economic development. I mean, when you look at these statistics, you see that Afghanistan has boosted enormous economic growth, but in reality, that growth seems to be mostly confined to Kabul. Um, now, we all know that if we want to win the battle over the future of Afghanistan, over democratic Afghanistan, and to root out Taliban, we will have to win the hearts and minds of the people in the rural areas. How can that be done realistically? in the current uh, security situation and political situation. And the second question is on the role of the United Nations. We now have uh, the appointment of a new uh, uh, representative of the Secretary General, very high level appointment, uh, Paddy Ashdown, uh, which is somewhere an expression from the international community and the United Nations that they want the UN to, to play a more um, effective or a bigger, more important role. So what are, what are your expectations of what the UN and what uh, Mr. Ashdown can do and should do uh, in Kabul? Yeah. Um, in the, um, as far as the economic development and, and <coughs> economic situation of, uh, with the people is concerned, uh, uh, at the beginning we paid uh, perhaps little attention to the issue of agriculture. And we missed the point that uh, uh, some 85, 80 percent of the people of Afghanistan are living on agriculture. Uh, and, of course, today, unfortunately, drug cultivation makes a part of it, a small part of that, but with, with, with grave consequences. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's the economy uh, of the people. Uh, and I recall uh, in our uh, second EDF Afghanistan Development uh, Framework uh, conference in Kabul, that was like one or two years, of, uh, a year and a half after the establishment of the interim government uh, in the uh, in the uh, economic development program of Afghanistan uh, or, or development of Afghanistan, we didn't have agriculture as a title, uh, and somebody reminded us. So this is uh, our inexperience and, and, and uh, 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 perhaps uh, at, at that stage lack of focus on the priorities or, 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 or uh, 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 losing sight of uh, prioritization of the situation in Afghanistan. That, uh, 
also we missed some opportunities in that al also perhaps uh, 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 be, be, be regarded as a factor uh, as far as narcotics is, is, is concerned. Um, but then, of course, security will have its impact on the situation. Uh, the focus was on building the infrastructure, which was important, of course. Capacity building has been a failure in Afghanistan. Uh, billions of dollars have been spent on technical assistances with very little impact uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the ground. Um, uh, uh, the, um, uh, despite all these, all these problems, the people of Afghanistan invested a lot. Billions of dollars were invested by the people, for example, in construction. Uh, in, 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 in the uh, other areas of life. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed picture, but uh, uh, you know, full of, uh, full of uh, challenges. Now, the UN role in the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, Lord Paddy Ashdown's role in the future as the high representative of the United Nations, though it still it is not a well-defined role, uh, but as an Afghan uh, citizen, I would uh, uh, th this will be like uh, the ideal situation for me, that if uh, the representative plays a role in coordinating further among the international community, that was the, meant to be the main role. Uh, and uh, we talked about lack of coordination earlier, or at least I talked about the aspects of it, uh, which means lack of coordination. Uh, uh, if that is being taken care of with such a high representative, high profile uh, representative in also uh, uh, the role that uh, uh, interacting with the capitals, uh, uh, in, in the, in the uh, uh, capitals, the issue of Afghanistan is being dealt in the administrations, uh, uh, in, the, in the level uh, of directors. Uh, to, to make it, to take it a little bit further, uh, that though it is, uh, it is, it is stated as a priority as far as the uh, policy of the countries are concerned, but in practice, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is, it is being dealt with not in the uh, uh, level of principles or or deputy principles, but much lower than that. So uh, to coordinate it there, uh, back in Afghanistan, as well as to give it a high profile in in, in maintain that high profile with the international community, uh, it has to. Uh, that, that's a positive development. But then the other aspect of it, which we ha have to be weary about it. We shouldn't give a perception that uh, now it is a situation that the, uh, uh, the, the rather than Afghanization of the process, further Afghanization of the process, more role is being given to the internationals. That will have uh, uh, negative repercussions. This has to be, uh, 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 I'm not saying that this will, uh, uh, this is designed to do so, uh, but uh, uh, it will give that sort of impression and we should avoid uh, that that uh, uh, that impression. Let me take one or two more. Uh, are there any in the back that we have missed? Yes, right here. Can you? <coughs> Hi, I'm Susan Cornwell with Reuters. Uh, would you like to comment more directly on the, the capabilities of, of NATO forces uh, to deal with counterinsurgency in Afghanistan? This was, you know, what. Gates uh, was quoted as saying, and he didn't entirely back off of his concerns generally about, he, you know, saying that our forces are not, we're not really trained for this. They were trained to fight the Soviet Union coming through the fold of gap. So. Um, as a whole, I think, I think even the American military learned, learned a lot in the process of how to deal with this insurgency and with this type of insurgency in Afghanistan. So it, it, uh, I, I, I don't think that anybody was equipped to deal with every nitty gritty part of strategy and tactics when dealing with this, with this sort of uh, uh, insurgency, uh, whether in Iraq or, 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 or today, uh, today in, in Afghanistan. But when it comes to NATO and to ISAF, there is the issue of the mandate, uh, which, is, which is not counterinsurgency which is not counter-terrorism, uh, which is a stabilization of Afghanistan in helping uh, security forces of Afghanistan in training and so on and so forth. That role also differs from one country to another due to their, uh, 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 the, the responsibility which they have taken. So it's the issue of the mandate uh, 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 which, is, which, is, uh, which is there. And uh, 
uh, again, coming back to the, uh, to the uh, perception of uh, the people of Afghanistan, uh, uh, there, there was a perception, for example, when, uh, uh, when, when Canada uh, uh, take, uh, uh, took the role in, in Kandahar, that this, uh, there might be a sort of softer approach towards the Taliban. Later on, the people learned that this wasn't the case. Uh, but, uh, uh, but there is an issue in the mandate. I, I don't think that uh, one or two upcoming summits will, uh, summits will be able to deal with this issue. It's a very uh, uh, difficult issue uh, back there uh, uh, in, the, in the capitals. You enjoyed your speech. Uh, I'm Fardun. I'm currently doing an intern for the Embassy of Afghanistan, and I studied Women's College. Um, I want to follow up on a question or you'll ask about the security. As an Afghan citizen, what stands out to be worked on as priority for me is security. So I specifically want to know your view if you know if you if you agree with the fact that. One of the reasons for deterioration of security is the lack of attention by the United States government and the international community as opposed to compared to years after the 9-11. As, as international community and United States government was committed to work for peace and stability in Afghanistan. And do you see a lack of attention when you compare it with years after 9-11? And do you think it's a, it's a significant reason of deterioration of security? Thank you. Uh, thanks. The, it, it, it isn't only one factor that you could, you could, you could, you could blame it for, for security, for the security situation in Afghanistan. There are domestic factors which more or less I covered it earlier. For example, uh, if it is a, a politically stable environment, that helps security. The issues of governance were, were uh, mentioned earlier and so on and so forth. As far as, far as our, our strategy uh, in, 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 in establishing national institutions are concerned, I think uh, 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 that uh, uh, there was a situation in Afghanistan post-September 11 that there were non-state actors in charge of the big size, middle-sized armies and so on and so forth. That situation should have come to an end and we should have established our uh, national institutions. In doing so, rather than, uh, than walking it through, we tend to jump from that. We dismantle those, those uh, uh, because, uh, because I mentioned at the beginning that the threat perception was, was somewhat deviated. We dismantle those forces and we left a vacuum. That also we shouldn't, we should, we shouldn't, uh, 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 we shouldn't ignore as a factor. And that vacuum was, was filled by the Taliban. The fact that Taliban were, uh, were allowed to, uh, to receive support outside Afghanistan. All, all these, these things, uh, these things uh, uh, are, um, uh, were important, including the fact that uh, uh, if not losing sight of Afghanistan, but Af at least Pakistan was not in the loop uh, uh, as such. The whole situation in the underlying factors which were uh, taking place and developing in, in Pakistan were were not, uh, 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 were, not were, were not in the site, uh, which, which lead to, to the further uh, uh, negative developments in, in terms of uh, security. All right, I, um, uh, Mr. Abdullah has been, as always, uh, uh, candid and uh, deeply knowledgeable and incredibly patient in, in answering so many questions. Um, I hope you'll join me in thanking him and um, hoping it won't be so long till you return. Thank you.